video, we're going to take a look at Trimble Connect and Trimble Access. So Trimble Connect is a cloud-based service that allows you to sync your data between the field and the office. Now, it is a, a two-way street, so you can send data from the office to the field or from the field to the office. In this video, we're going to take a look at using the Trimble Sync Manager to send data from the office to the field. And I'll create another video that shows you how to create data in the field and send it to the office. All right, there's a few things you're gonna need to get started. The first thing is a data collector that has a valid Trimble access warranty on it, okay? That valid Trimble access warranty grants you one license to uh, a Trimble Connect business account. And a business account allows you to set up as many projects as you want and send as much data back and forth as you want. So for every data collector you have that has a valid Trimble Access warranty on it, you get one license. Now you can also buy more licenses from your Trimble reseller if you need them. But like if you got three data collectors with valid warranties, three licenses, five data collectors, five licenses, and so on and so on. Okay, the second thing you need to do is choose somebody in your organization that's going to be the account administrator. This is the person that's going to assign those licenses to the people that need them. Now, everybody that uses this system, whether they're in the office or the field, needs a license so that they can take full advantage of the software and send data back and forth. Okay, the third thing you're going to need to do is contact your Trimble reseller and ask them to assign that administrator you choose to the data collector. So they have to do that on the back end. They'll assign that person to the data collectors and data collector or data collectors, depending on how many you have that have valid warranties and that will get your licenses set up, okay? Once that's done, that administrator is gonna get an email that's gonna look something like this. It's gonna have some information about Trimble Connect and business account, but it's gonna have a button down there that will allow you to visit the Trimble License Manager, or you might have one that tells you you need to set up a Trimble ID. So a Trimble ID is just your email address and a password that allows you to log into all things Trimble. So if you already have a Trimble ID, it's gonna look like this, where you just get a button to visit the Trimble License Manager. If you don't have a Trimble ID, you'll need to set up your Trimble ID first then you'll need to click on this button to go to the license manager. And when we go to the license manager, that's going to look like this. I'm going to go ahead and expand that out. In this case, I have three data collectors that have valid warranties, so I have three licenses up here on my license page, right? I'm automatically assigned to one of them because I'm the administrator, so it just automatically assigns me. But if I don't want to be one of those people as the administrator, maybe the, your IT guy is the administrator and he doesn't need a license, you can click on this little X here to remove that user and you could assign it to somebody else, okay? But the number of licenses you have here is going to be tied to the hardware over here on the left. So these are the data collectors that I have that have valid warranties on them. And so three data collectors, three licenses, and so on. Again, if you need more licenses, contact your Trimble reseller and you can get additional licenses licenses as needed. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is go ahead and set users up once we log in. To create users, you just click on users at the left and then you've got a create button up here at the top right. I've got four users already set up. All you have to do is hit the create user button, put in their email address, put in their first name, their last name, and choose whether or not you want them to be an admin or a user. Admins can delete stuff off of Connect and create more. They have more power to, to you know, add and delete information where users can only download the uh, information that's assigned to them, okay? So just choose what you want there and hit Create New User. And that will go ahead and set up your user list. Now, there's some confusion about this I hear from people. You can set up as many users as you want in this list, but then once the users are set up, you have to go back over here to licenses and assign a user a license. So if I've got three licenses, but I have four users, not all those users are gonna get a license, right? You can set up as many users as you want, but you can only assign the number of licenses that you have, and again, each guy that's using the system needs his own license, okay? <clears throat> so I've got a license here. 
I'm the admin, I'm working in the office. If I wanted to send it to one of my field guys, I could just click the drop down. This is gonna show me all of the users I've created. And I could choose say John Brown DPI crew two at yahoo.com and assign him a license. So now John Brown, who's my party chief out in the field, he can log in, he can see anything that I create in the office and that I assign to him, and then he can upload his data back to me, okay? So set up your users, assign them a license. Remember, each guy that's using the system, whether office or field, needs to have a license to get you know, the full functionality out of the software, all right? Then once I get all my users set up, my license is set up, I'm ready to go ahead and take a look at Trimble Sync Manager and how to create stuff in the office. So I'll go ahead and open the Sync Manager on my computer. Again, you're gonna log in using your Trimble ID. Once you're logged in, click on the little account guy at the top and make sure that you have a business license there. If you are set up in the license manager that we were just looking at, with a license, you should have a business license up there. If it says free account, you didn't assign yourself a license, okay? Or that person doesn't have a license and you'll need to make sure they have a license assigned to them. But if it says business license, they're good to go. We're good to go ahead and start creating data here in the office and send it to the field through the sync manager. All right, so the first page in the sync manager is the project page. And just think of the project page, that's, that's the folder where all the data is gonna live on the data collector, okay? So whether it's a job file, whether it's a, uh, you know, a, a DXF background map or a point file, this project is the folder where all that info is gonna live on the data collector. So I'll click the new button up at the top and I've got a lot survey I need to do of lot 148. So I'm just gonna go ahead and call my project name lot 148, choose the region that's closest to me. I'm in North Carolina in the United States. So I'm gonna go with North America there. And then make sure you choose your business license. Make sure you're not on Trimble Connect for free, but use your business license there and hit the create button. This will go ahead and create the project and then it will open up another page that has the project overview. When the project overview screen pops up, you have the option here to create a new job. And this will allow you to create the job in the office, attach any data you want attached to it and send it out there to the field. Okay, so I'll click create job here, put the job name in at the top, and this is gonna look a lot like Trimble Access if you use that. I'm gonna call it lot 148 as well, just like the project. I could put subfolders in there if I wanted to. Um, I could also do reference numbers, descriptions, but this is where I would assign it to my guy in the field, right? Now, if I'm going out and doing the field work myself, I'm already, I created it. My email address, Trimble ID is already tied to this. I wouldn't need to do that. But if I'm sending it out to another user in the field, I'll need to assign it here. So this is where I'll put in that DPI crew two at yahoo.com. and I'm gonna make him a user. So I'll go ahead and invite him. Now he's gonna get an email letting him know that he's been invited to this project and he's got stuff that he can download there, okay? Now the next thing we need to do is just make sure that we have the proper version of access here that we're using, um, whether it's 2021.20 or later or something newer than, or earlier than that, excuse me. So we're gonna use the newer software and then I can add job files or I can add project files, okay? Job files are gonna be files that are assigned to the job. So when the crew chief opens the job up on the data collector, that data is gonna be right there on the screen for him. Project files are just gonna go into the project folder and he can link those at a later time. So just depending on how you want the data, like by setting a job up here and assigning job files, you send that to the crew they download the job, when they open it up, boom, all that information is gonna be right there on the screen. But you could also come over here and add stuff to project files. Now I've got a CSV file with some look points and a DXF that shows the lot that I want to add as job files. So I'll just click on this little plus over here. That is on my desktop. So there is my DXF and my CSV file. I'll go ahead and open those up. And then I'll just go down here and make sure all my units are set properly. So I could add a feature library. If I, if I had a feature library I wanted to use, I could just add it straight in here to the project files and then select it. Um, 
make sure my units are right. Again, this looks a lot like Trimble Access, right? I'm in North Carolina, so I'm using survey feet. You could set it to you know international feet. You could set it to meters, however you want it. Then you could set up all the display information. I'm going to go ahead and minimize the units and take a look at my coordinate system. I could reset that to scale only if I was doing a scale of one job, or it remembers the last job I used, which was in North Carolina. So it's going to go ahead and pull that coordinate system up. But I'm going to go ahead and hit the define button just so you can see what that looks like. So define it, you can just come in here and type in wherever you're working. Like I can type in North Carolina and hit the enter button. And it's going to look for all the coordinate systems in North Carolina. So since I'm working in United States, NAT 83, North Carolina 3200, I can select that. It's going to go ahead and set the datum up. It's going to go ahead and add the geoid file in there for me. So I can click the save button there and then just add a project height. This is just like in Access. Uh, this is about 100 foot lower because it's looking for a height here, which is an ellipsoid height. So this is about 100 foot lower than my ground elevation here in the eastern U.S. That might vary depending on where you are in the world, but your project height is going to be an ellipsoid height. And it's just a jumping off point that the software uses if it needs to calculate any scale factors and the points in the job file don't have elevations. Okay, then it's going to default back to this project height. So it's really not used very much, but just get it somewhere close. All right, so I've got my uh, coordinate system set to North Carolina 3200 with a geoid model, got my project height in there. Now I can scroll down and just like Trimble Access, if I'm setting up a grid job, I like to set my Kogo to grid also. It defaults to ground, but you'll want to set that to grid if it's a grid job. You know, if it's a ground job, you can set it to ground. And you do have the ability in here to set up ground-based projects as well. So you can do a scale of one. I can do the coordinate system. I can set it to ground as well. But for this example, I'm just going to keep it simple and stick with a grid job. I've got my other settings, just like Trimble Access down here, where I can use descriptions, base code, append files, um, and then if I had job or points that I wanted to import directly into the job, I could hit my plus button down here at the bottom and I could add that CSV file and that's going to actually import them into the job. By adding them as job files up here at the top, this is the way I like to do it. By adding the files up here at the top, these are going to be linked to the job so I can always unlink them and turn them on and off in the job. Okay, but just to recap, Put the job name in, I assigned it to somebody, I added files that I needed to, I made sure my units were right, I set up my coordinate system, I set my Kogo settings the way I wanted them, I can add points or not add points since I'm linking files, I don't need to add the points to the job here, I did it up top, and then I can hit the create button and that's going to be all set up. So I've got a project with a job that has points in a background map already loaded in it, all right? I've invited my crew chief. He's going to receive an email letting him know that he's got these files or this job, this project that's ready for him to go work on. And now we're ready to head to the field. And now I've got my Trimble Access field software set up. Now, this is a brand new, uh, you know, install of Trimble Access here. So there's no projects already, but you will need to go up here to your account at the top and go ahead and log in with that Trimble ID that was assigned from the sync manager, right? Um, and that way you'll be able to see the projects that were assigned to you. So I can hit the refresh button and there's that lot 148. There's a cloud with a down arrow, so it's ready to be downloaded. So I can select that project and it'll automatically download the project. Now we're looking inside the project and there's that job that we set up in the office and there's the CSV file and the DXF file. Okay, so I can choose to download them as well. And now it downloaded the uh, the corners, it downloaded the DXF, and it downloaded the job. So my coordinate system's all set up the way I want it. I've got my background map, and I've got my look points in there. So that makes it easy to get a package set up in the office, send it out to your party chief. He just has to uh, log in with his Trimble ID, using the license you assigned him in the license manager, download the project, download the job, and he's got everything he needs to go to work. So now when my field crew has gone out and located the actual property corners, you can see we've got uh, four new points on the map there. They can go ahead and sync that data back to the office by going to the menu at the top left, clicking on the job, 
The job now has a cloud with an up arrow indicating that it needs to be uploaded or has new information in it. And they can come over here to the uh, top right and choose to upload that file. So it's going to go ahead and upload that job file. They can also set this status to either in progress to let you know that, hey, I uploaded the file, but I'm still working on it. Just wanted to send you some data or they could set it to field work complete. That way in the office, you know that the field work is done on it. So now that I've changed the status, I'll just hit the refresh button one more time. So the job's been uploaded and now the status has been uploaded. So now we can go back and take a look at it in the office. I'll open up my sync manager. I'm still right here in the project overview where we left off earlier. You'll see it still says new here, but if I hit the sync button at the top, it comes up as field work complete. All right, so now in the office, I know the guys are done with the job. All I have to do is click on the job here and it'll go ahead down at the bottom. We can see that it's exporting lot 148 to a job XML file. It's gonna show us the project or the properties here. Um, it shows these are the four points that they actually shot out there in the field. There are linked files. There's the CSV file and the DXF file. And now I get the option down at the bottom right to go ahead and download this to my computer. So I click the download button. I can choose where I want to send it to. I'm just going to send it to my documents folder. You could create a folder in there to send it to wherever you want it there. Select that and there you'll see that that information was downloaded right there. So I got the lot 148 job, the lot 148 JXL in my documents folder now.